Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, "Come up to the mount to come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instructions." So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed this morning is Psalm 99. 
Let us read the psalm responsively by whole verse. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. (laughs) Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Our second reading is from the from the second book or the second letter to Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the magni- majestic glory saying This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and morning star arises in your heart. First of all, you must understand this that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Six days after Peter had acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, 
Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the, crown and cr fell to the ground and were over overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Savior. Good morning. Today is the last Sunday of Epiphany. Lent begins on Wednesday, and next Sunday is the first of six weeks of Lent. Next week, the colors of the church will magically change from green to purple, not so magically. The altar guild takes care of all of that. We'll have veiled crosses and pottery chalices. It will be different from Epiphany. While Epiphany is marked with light and the revelation of God in Jesus, Lent is our invitation to journey with Jesus through the cross to the resurrection. Our gospel passage today, the Transfiguration, is a hinge in the liturgical year between Epiphany and Lent. The transfiguration story we hear this morning is a pretty familiar one. We hear a version of this story every single year on the last Sunday of Epiphany. The story of Jesus and three disciples ascending a mountain to pray, the vision of Moses and Elijah and Jesus in dazzling white, the cloud of light, and the divine voice are fairly well known to us. I, for one, have long assigned this story to the version of miraculous and thought it had nothing to do with me. Certainly, I've never had that experience. It's easy to think that it doesn't have anything to do with us. Transfiguration isn't a word that comes up in everyday conversation. It just doesn't. You know by now that I am a word geek. And so I like to look up words, and so I did. Transfigure is of Middle English origin from the Greek originally. And it means to change the form of something completely, especially to make it better and more spiritual. I also looked at the Greek word that is translated transfigure in English in Matthew. It turns out that that word, the one translated in Matthew as transfigured, isn't found very often in the New Testament. In fact, it's only there five times. You find it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you find it in two of the letters from Paul, Romans 12 and 2 Corinthians. And there it's translated not transfigure, but transform. In Romans 12, we're told, do not conform to the pattern of this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in 2 Corinthians, it says, all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. One of the things I find interesting about this word in scripture is that all the references to this word in the New Testament are in the passive voice. It's not about doing something. It's about letting something be done to you. Jesus is transfigured. He doesn't transfigure himself. And we are called to be transformed, not to transform ourselves. That makes me wonder if one of the reasons that I, and perhaps you, dismiss transfiguration and transformation from everyday life is because they aren't things that we do. They're done to us. Now, we Americans just don't particularly like the passive voice. We like to be the actors, not the ones acted upon. And yet, in the spiritual life, the initiative is always God's. We respond to God's action in us and to us. That is true in the whole of the scriptures. It is God who creates and blesses and initiates relationships. It is God who calls us to action and gives and forgives. We are always responding to God. And in the times when we do take action into our own hands in scripture, without reference to God, we get in trouble. Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge. The Israelites demand a golden image of the deity while Moses is up on the mountain with God. And the disciples, walking along with Jesus, squabble about who's the greatest among them. We know how well all of those stories turned out. We can probably add times from our own lives when we have taken action without much reference to God's desire for us. In my experience, it rarely ends well. In the transfiguration, Jesus allows himself to be acted upon by God. It is God's presence that shines so brightly through Jesus. In the cloud of God's glory that overshadows the disciples, it is God's voice that speaks. Now Peter, like us, is pretty uncomfortable with mystery and he wants to act. Lord, I'll make three dwellings right here for you and for Elijah and Moses. But while he's talking, he's interrupted by the cloud and the voice and he falls to the ground in awe of the divine presence. It is only after Jesus touches him and tells him not to be afraid that he and the other disciples are able to look up again and see Jesus. And then coming down the mountain after all this, Jesus tells them again not to act, not to talk about the vision they've seen or what they experienced not to do any of that until Jesus rises from the dead. Now, all of this is not to say that either the disciples or us are never to act. We're certainly called to act for reconciliation among people and nations. We're, at, we're called to act to heal the creation God has entrusted to us. We're called to help transform systems that perpetuate injustice. The trick about all that is to remember that we act because we are called, that our efforts and work and prayer are in response to God's transforming work in us. It is God who calls and desires wholeness and goodness in all of the creation. So that leads me to wonder, what might God be wanting to transform, to transfigure in each of us as we approach this season of Lent? How might we be more present 
and aware to the call of God in the circumstances of every day. Where might God be calling us to act to be about the work of transformation in the world? These are big questions. Fortunately, we have 40 days coming up in which to think about them. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Strengthen your church with humility and faith, that we might triumph over the power of evil. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You abhor neither the simple nor the lowly. Shine your light on all the world, that the nations may look upon your truth and find their salvation. Glorious Lord, Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. May all of creation burst forth in songs of praise. May all your works of your hand glorify you. We offer our thanksgiving now aloud or within our hearts. <laughs> Glorious Lord. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Summon the, summon the people of this community to yourself. May all of the distractions and heartache of our lives fade away in the joy of your presence. Glorious Lord. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You love us so dearly. Grant your healing grace to sinners to the poor, to those in need of love. Open your arms to the sick and the lonely. We pray for those on our parish prayer list and those we now name aloud or within our hearts. Glorious Lord. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. All glory be given to you. You blessed our earthly bodies with your birth, 
and you promise to raise us to a new life by your death and resurrection. Glorious Lord, source of light and gladness, accept the prayers we offer this day and always. May we grow in Jesus Christ who unites our lives to yours and who is Lord for all eternity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. and welcome. Thanks for showing up today. Um, still, it's still winter and you're still here, so good job. We're getting through it. Um, we've had for the last three weeks uh, listening sh sessions. Uh, Kate has been leading this in the parlor. Uh, we've been trying to hear from um, adults in our, in our uh, parish family about what would be best for us to offer in our Christian formation classes to help you um, to, to grow in your faith and to, to, to learn and walk in the way of, of love. So um, it's not too late. We're not doing any more listening sessions, but we're still listening. So if you have an idea of what you would like to, um, for us to offer, you can still contact Kate. You can email her or give her a call, and um, then we'll put all that information together and, and come up with something. Hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, it is uh, coming up to Lent this week, uh, Shrove Tuesday, or Mardi Gras. A fat Tuesday is this coming Tuesday. And we're doing a pancake supper um, in the parish hall at 6 p.m. And then following the pancake supper, we're doing the burning of the palms, which is out in the front uh, churchyard. So um, please do join us for that at 6 p.m. And then Wednesday of this week is Ash Wednesday all of a sudden. And um, so we have services at 12 and at 7. So those are your opportunities. I think one, uh, no, I don't think Ash Wednesday services are online, so a uh, live stream. So I think ju those are just in person. And then also during the season of Lent, I'm going to be um, leading a book study from a book that Rob Bell uh, wrote called What is the Bible? It's going to be at my home, and there's free soup and bread. Don't, don't get your hopes up too much, though. I'm cooking the soup. So, uh, so but um, look for the dates. It's a four-week series, um, and it's, not everybody's going to love this book. Uh, it's kind of controversial. It's kind of stirred people up. I like to pick books like that to get people sort of jazzed and ready to talk. So, um, so if you'd like to join us, that would be fantastic. That will be uh, Google meeted. I don't know what the verb is there. But um, if, you, if you don't want to come for the soup and bread or, or you're still really uh, COVID careful, then we will be uh, doing that on Google Meet as well. And the link is in the, uh, we'll send the link out to everybody. Um, let's see. Oh, also, uh, right after this, there is a vestry meeting. And uh, just a quick word about vestry. The vestry, if you didn't know, are our uh, lay leaders. Uh, this year, again, Harvey Caldwell is our senior warden. Kathy Smith is our junior warden. And then we have vestry folks. We're trying to be as transparent as possible. And those vestry meetings, are you're welcome to come to those. Um, not, we don't get a lot of people who come to those, uh, but you are always welcome to come and, and be a part of those. And we also live stream those as well, so if you want to uh, check out what's going on. Um, and then the minutes from those meetings, if you want to know what decisions are being made behind the scenes, uh, those minutes are always available to you. Just call the, the church office and we, we can get those uh, to you. Mark. You like cut me off, of course. <laughs> Sorry. So the Sunday news, by the way, has actually got a lot of information and is particularly helpful this week because it has our schedule of everything that's going on, which is a lot. But one of the things I'd like to point out to you is on uh, Monday, the 27th, we're going to have a conversation about servanthood work and what we can be doing 
here at St. John's to be out in the world. So I invite you to that conversation on Monday, February 27th at 5.30. The other thing that's going on is that on the 27th, we have a Red Cross blood drive. So those of you who need to whip out your calendar, Monday the 27th, starting at 11. So it's a little earlier drive. So if you're able to help, we normally have two hour shifts from, you know, you'd go from 11 to one, one to three and three to five. So let me know if you're able to help. Um, that's it. Thank you. And you might have noticed that there, in addition to the Sunday news, we also had a, that Carrie put together a little leaflet about the season of Lent. So hopefully you picked one of those up as well. Stephanie. It's interesting how there are Asian uh, We're challenging ourselves this morning along with you. And we thank Sherry and Sylvia for coming along with us. You may seem, it may, it may feel like you are wandering around in the desert, but soon there will be a wondrous sight. Wait for that, enjoy the hallelujahs, and please come with the Magi on our journey. Ooh, can hardly wait. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning star sings your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of your, our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The table of bread and wine is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all those who love him. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites all of us to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Now our service begins. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.